Hey, my name is Margaret Wong, and today we are here to talk about millionaire migration to the United States. What if I'm a millionaire in South America, Asia, or Europe and want to move to the United States? What do I need to do? It's so nice to think, oh my gosh, millionaires. Actually, nowadays, you're right, it's more billionaires now, it's not even millionaires. So if you think about America in the past 200 years versus the world, we are definitely well off more now than ever before. I was just thinking this morning when I was taking a shower. It's only about 50 years ago before I immigrated to America, we didn't have hot showers. We still have to cook water, boil water in a pot, go to the bathtub and pour it down. That's only 30, 20 years ago. So now we have hot showers, we have soap in the, in the old days. I mean, a piece of soap is very expensive. So if I'm rich, I'm not even talking about a millionaire. If I'm rich, how do I come to America? There are a few ways to do it. If I own my own business as an entrepreneur in the Far East or in Europe, then I can come as an L1. I can also do an EB-5, an investment visa. And there are two types of EB-5s. You do direct or indirect million dollar investing or direct and indirect half a million dollar investing. We can do EB, uh, E-1, E-2, as I said earlier, parallel track. So if I own a business back home, I can do an E-1 or E-2. For example, Korea have E-1, E-2. Um, Taiwan have it, Hong Kong does not, China have not. not. Um, certain Middle Eastern people have it, certain Middle Eastern countries don't have it. That's an E visa. EB-5 is investment. You can also do um, direct or indirect. So for example, recently we won a case, it's from Middle East uh, on EB-5, where the source of funds is not in dispute, but most important thing in all these investment visa is a source of funds. Where did I get my money? Did I earn it? Did I file tax return? And that's the difficulty in most countries. Because in most countries, the tax return is not that important. It's not like in America, we have to file tax because it's Homeland Security. But overseas now, it's not that important. So to win those cases, source of funds is important. Where are you investing? You couldn't just say, of course, we're foreign people. We're very smart, right? So we'll say, we plan to invest this if I get my visa. Those days were gone. 20 years ago, you could give them a business plan and you tell them, if I won my e-visa, I'll go to America and invest. Nowadays, you have to invest first before you get the visa. So it's like a chicken and egg. So we win quite a lot of those cases. We need a good business plan. We need to prove source of funds. We also make sure, are you investing in a franchise? If so, are you hiring 10 people? Are they newly created jobs? That's more for EB-5. For regular e-visa, which is a non-immigrant visa, you don't need that. You don't need to prove number of people that you hire. You just need to prove what kind of business and what's the relationship between the home country business and that's, that's more an L visa. So there's a lot of ways to maneuver the investment cases. There are other millionaire visas, like you can do an e-visa. E-visa does an E1, E2, the future video becoming. Other millionaire visas, are, aside from EB-5, aside from L1, you can also do an EB-1C. If you are an awesome entrepreneur, an awesome self-starter, you can also do an EB-1A or even an EB-1B or national interest waiver. Or even a simple B1, B2, you can come to America check out your investment opportunities and then go back and then come back and invest. Our law firm has won a very, very difficult asylum case. Yes. Um, so I don't know if you want to go ahead and kind of tell us a little bit about this asylum case and then I'll go ahead and just go through this sure. with our viewers in Spanish. Uh -huh. We wouldn't see this. One thing nice about the immigration law practice, I'm not talking about just an immigration advisement practice. Immigration advice, for example, someone call you and say, my son wants to go to college, uh, the big college scandal, huh? Or how do I do that? That's more an advice. Immigration law practice is the execution of your plan on how to come to America how to stay here and work and get a driver's license and social security number. 
and how to become a millionaire one day if you want that's if that's your dreams and your goals and we can accomplish it right so now we got and suzanne wants us to talk about that we just won a very serious case from uh, richard khan mexico the kid was born in 1979 the father is a serious alcoholic it's an asylum case it's sort of a sad case and that differs from the millionaire cases the millionaires cases are more you came legally, you maintain status on the E or L or B1 or something, or student visa. In the meantime, you do an investment visa, you do a perm, and now you get a green card. That's a different roadmap than asylees. And we need to distinguish asylee practices because asylees, aside from the southern border drama and the 60-minute show, we have a lot of inland people. Numbers are anywhere between 12 million to 15 million to 30 million of undocumented people in America. Once you became undocumented, it's very, very difficult to get a green card through the millionaire's route. That's why we always advise people, you want to come illegally, we're suffering. It's not like 50 years ago when people come to America, it was just very easy. Nowadays, if you are undocumented, really, the relief is getting lesser and lesser. So in this case, we won because it really is a very, very good case for us. And it takes a whole team. We have paralegals who does research. We have litigation lawyers. All they do, I tell them, they're the heart surgeons of our law firm. They go to court, they run in, they try the case, they run back out. And in the meantime, we have to prep, prep, prep. We have teams of people who help these litigation lawyers to prepare them to go to the IH, what we call individual hearing, to win. Of course we lose. Of course we don't talk about it. It's just like gambler, right? You have lose, you have won. Hopefully the winning is more than the losing. And then um, we win more. But joking aside, this is a serious, serious practice because you have, you're dealing with people's lives. And there's a lot of issues because as a lawyer, we're controlled by the Bar Association. They are the ones who control our licensing. They watch our practices, the ethics, you know, the issues. What cases should we go up to go to an appeal? Because you don't want to bring a bad case on appeal because if it's bad, you lose a precedent setting case. It really not just affects your own client, it affects other people. On the other hand, you really want to help your client and to appeal and to do motions to hopefully to win the case and at least allow them to stay in America. Thank you for watching our video here with attorney Margaret Wong. My name is Stephanie Ayala. We hope you enjoyed today's topic. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Leave any questions or comments down below that we can potentially use for future videos. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For more information about our law firm, check out our website at imwong.com and feel free to schedule a consultation at 216-566-9908. Thank you.